for probably no better time to, I guess, get the monkey off the back in terms of beating Wellington. Um, your impressions of the game overall? Yeah, there was a lot of talk this week about, you know, we lost three times to Wellington this year, which I expect anyway, because I know um, that it is a story and it was a story. And then someone brought up that it was my kryptonite today uh, because I haven't I haven't won too many times against Wellington. So <laughs> it's uh, interesting how uh, these stories come out. But that's, you know, uh, normal that uh, we put it to bed. And we we're, we're really happy with uh, the win because first finals home game and and we won as a football club where we know we're on a journey we're trying to create history with the the club and uh, and the players you know again we're exceptional because we, we've had our our difficulties in terms of players not available we've had our difficulties in terms of not having a home ground and being traveling and whatever but they never put their head down they keep going um you know we we had a, a pretty I'll say poor last week in terms of results, but finals is different, and uh, and we proved that tonight because uh, we got the win that we wanted. Jamie Young, um, also just described him as the best player, probably the best player in the park. How did you assess that performance? That yeah, yeah, two best players on the park were probably Jamie Young and Oli Sale. They were they were they were outstanding, both goalkeepers. I think they've probably been the two in-form goalkeepers along with Birigidi all season. So. Um, they, they were good. Uh, Jamie, I expect that from Jamie. I, I've known Jamie for a long time, coached him in Brisbane. and um, So um, I, I knew that Jamie will and can pull off the important saves. And, uh, and for these games, you need your uh, experienced players to step up, and, and they did. That save you had from Jamie was McGarry's header in the 71st minute where he's picked out. Have you seen a better save than that? In Gordon the Banks. Hey, it was like a Gordon Banks save, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, mate. <laughs> I don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> it did remind me of that. I wasn't alive, obviously, that time, but I've seen that save a, a lot of times when Pelé had that header and uh, Banks saved it. So, yeah, it was an incredible save. Um, you know, he, uh, he obviously his reflexes there and, and to have that strong hand to pull it around the post was impressive. Talking about composure and key players needing it at the right time, Alexander in the first 10 minutes, you know, took his goal brilliantly, you know, just had to compose himself and put it in the back of the net. Um, just, I guess, a comment on his performance tonight. Yeah, look, he was very disappointed after the Adelaide game because he had uh, some clear chances and he was uh, he was down. And and um, But I, you know, I had a, a word with him and spoke to him and, and you just know that, that these players with that experience that you know, played Champions League football and scored important goals uh, for not only his clubs that he's played for, but also his country qualifying for a World Cup, that these games they they enjoy, they step up. And um, it, was, it was so calm the way he took it. Um, we knew that we'll create overloads in the box because uh, we had Dylan Wenzel Halls and Alex in there. And a lot of the time we had a winger going in there. So that's why we we're getting balls into the area as often as possible when they were in there. Sometimes when they weren't in there and we crossed the ball, it wasn't the right time. But we knew that we'd get our chances. And uh, if it's not on the first ball, it would be off the second ball. And, um, you know, but they're a dangerous team to play against because they can catch you quickly the other way if you don't uh, set up defensively well. We've asked you, I mean, all season about the potential of playing Dylan and Alexander as a front two in the last two games. You've gone with that and you've gotten goals from Dylan last week and Alexander today. How have you seen them, front, them two work together in that tandem playing more with two out-and-out strikers instead of maybe playing someone Lockie or Alino before that as well? Yeah, they're, they're getting better at it. Um, I think their understanding's getting better um, because there's certain times that one might have to just drop into that space that's left uh, where our 10 normally would be. Um, and then, you know, and then other times, you know, they can combine a little bit more around the box. But, you know, they haven't played a lot together. But uh, they're, they're dangerous because last week uh, it looks like Dylan's got a tap in or he did have a tap in, but it was because of Alex positioning in the box. And, and this week, you know, Dylan was in a position to, you know, create more space for Alex on that occasion. So, um, you know, Dylan Wenzel Hall was probably disappointed that he didn't get on the, the score sheet tonight because he had his chances as well. So that, that's what that gives you. It gives you sometimes in terms of with the ball and controlling the game, it can, it can hurt you a little bit at times. But, you know, we look dangerous going forward. Speaking of uh, Pivovic's movement and, you know, how he, how he relates to the rest, of the rest of the players in your team, how adaptable do you think he has been and, you know, in terms of importance for you guys, especially with Diamante up for so long? He doesn't see the he doesn't see the ball for a lot of the time over the course of the ninety, but he seems to be effective in the times that he does see the ball. Um, 
yeah, just how adaptable do you think he is in that? Respect? Yeah, he's been uh, he's been great in that sense because it's not easy. We, We've had so many players in and out. You know, Diamante started with him at the start, and then we, we had Lustica, then we had Lockie Wales, and then his chop changed. So he, the movements are different, and they had they're, they're going to be different because of the personnel. So he has to adapt, and a lot of the time he does uh, adapt well. And he's got the experience to know where there's space as well, and and you know where his teammates are. So a lot of time in the first half, you know, it was a, it was a quick ball up to Alex, someone underneath, and we're away. And, and it's within three passes, we're down the opposition box. So that that's the beauty of of Alex and and his understanding of the game. Coming into that, well, talking about that spring into transition that you you know had pretty effectively in the first half. After you went up, I guess how confident were you that Wellington weren't really going to break you down in that first half if you sat in the way you did? Oh, look, you you always believe that your your actual defensive structure will make it half the opposition. But look, Wellington, where where they really hurt you, they do move the ball around well. They they do that well, and they and they try and if you leave too much space in behind you, they play their strikers in those channels, and they can do that well. But um, where they they can become dangerous is when, uh, and I mentioned before, when you're getting balls into areas in the attacking third. As soon as the ball comes out, Piscopor or Sandoval and and you know these players are in good areas to break on you, and they break on you quickly. So, you know you always have to be switched on and aware. And and the players were, you know, we we, we know that uh, they still had their chances, but um, you know a lot of the time we were able to stop them from from doing that. Well, you just one block to cut nets, like it couldn't get much more blockbuster. Mm. That, um, Melbourne victory twice at Amy Park and the space of about five days. How how excited I guess is this group for the challenge how big a challenge is it no it's it's huge for for the club um another home final against victory is uh, that's that's massive and uh you know the players deserve it and the and the, the the club deserve it because through the whole year we've been in the top two or three so we deserve to be there and along with victory and along with city um, and, it, and it's massive for the game in melbourne um and we're excited to be there we know it's going to be difficult because victory are a good side but um, we also believe in ourselves and believe that we can uh, match it with anyone. So it's huge. And, you know, it's over two legs. So both at Amy Park, um, you know, it's another two home finals for us, really. John, just, sorry, just, John, just on that, you've got two legs against Melbourne Victory, potentially a grand final against Melbourne City after that, if they get the job done. You talk about going on a journey and building this club up and building this identity. How important could these coming weeks be for that? Not only making a grand final in silverware, but beating Melbourne sides on the way to do it. Uh, look, we uh, we don't want to jump the gun too early and, and say that you know we're beating Melbourne sides. It's important that we're putting ourselves in these positions. That's that's the most important. And then after that, the the, the better team will win over the two legs, and then we'll see if uh, whoever makes the grand final. But um, through the season uh, with Melbourne City, we, we've matched it with them, really. Uh, so that was important for us. Uh, and Melbourne victory, we've had that last game was a close game, 1-1 one, one in the end. So we're here. We're, we're, you know, we've got our own journey to go on, but it's also important because we know that the, the two Melbourne sides, we need to keep with them and the clubs, we need to keep with them. And uh, we're trying to do that. Is, is there a sense this season because the three Melbourne teams have topped the table all year, really. Is the power balance in the Australian game shifting or is it just a, a one-off kind of fact this year that you three happen to be good? Yeah, it, it's hard to say, uh, Lynch, if it's a one-off because we, we don't know what will happen next season. I'm sure that you know the, the sides from interstate will make sure that they make it hard for three Melbourne sides to be up there again. All I can say is that we were and are the best three teams in the comp um, throughout the whole year. Finals football is different, so we don't know what will happen, you know, whoever wins between Adelaide and Central Coast with uh, City, but uh, the, the three Melbourne teams deserve to be up there. Whether that stays like that next season, don't know. We, we, we're looking to improve as a club, and I'm sure those two sides will look to improve. As part of over their journey, it's had a fair bit of stick, you know, for the not very high number of fans you attract and the way you've moved grounds so often but what would making a grand final do to basically tell the critics to stuff it really <laughs> um, I, I think we've sort of done that anyway this season you know in terms of the the way that we've 
we've tried to go about it as a football club. We, we know where we're, uh, we're at as a football club. We know that we're on a journey. The, the, it's there. It's in place. We're, we're, the training facility will be done very soon. And then all of a sudden the stadium and then we'll be west and we'll be out west. But the, from my side, what I had to try and do with the team is try and show what we are made of. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't look for any excuses when we had to travel. And we had to have different five different stadiums, so that's gone. We uh, we look at that we're we're a team that is going to work hard for each other, that uh, will give everything for each other, and and that really represents the West. And uh, and so you can see that already. And the football will be there because we want to play good football as well. But the first thing we have to do, and we are doing, is making sure that we work and we work hard for each other. I can ask another one. Yep. Actually, you talked about the club's journey but this is very much potentially the culmination of a coaching journey for you isn't it i mean i remember when you started here in this city with melbourne heart and that didn't end very gloriously but you know you've made semi-finals uh twice with brisbane so from a personal point of view what would it mean to you to be able to climb climb over that mountain and make a grand final i would like to get there for everyone uh, that's been involved in the club and that are involved and and for myself it's you know the journey's part of it it's uh, you have your ups and downs in coaching um so you know i i would like to get there of course mm -hmm. but it's more about the team getting there and uh you know that we've got two important games and two difficult games but we're you know in terms of uh this is the first time i'm having a home semi-final or major semi-final um, both times at Brisbane, you know, we played away. So um, whenever we play at home at the moment, my team or the team that I'm coaching wins. So let's hope that's a good omen because we've got two games at Amy. Just on Renee, Renee Quinn, uh, he was clutching his hamstring in the, in the second half and obviously had a bit of ice there. How is he? He's just, just yeah, not sure. We, we'll have scans tomorrow to see the extent. Let's hope it's not too serious. He has had hamstring issues. He, he's, he's got scar tissue in that area. So for him to come off, it's not a good sign, but let's hope that he, uh, it's only scar tissue that was giving him problems. Has Riz been pulled up okay with him coming on? He might be important. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Riz pulled up well. Yeah, I very important. talked about um, Jamie Young, but a lot of the key members have brought in were important in particular in the five or six thirty in the second half. Neil took Kenny, one of them as well. A bit of a what about the two experienced players that held it together when you know Wellington fans will get a bit of a mention. Yeah, I thought that Neil did really well for us. Um, he controlled the game, manages the game. In finals football you need to be able to manage certain situations because it's going to go end to end they're going to push they're going to give everything because you know it's a do or die game and you need that experience in there to help and then also reese bozanowski's legs coming in helped us as well and uh, and he's only a young kid it's only 18 years old or just turned 18 so it, it was great to have that and then yeah we we spoke about already um you know, uh, Rene, uh, Leo, Leo again looked like he moved like he was at the beginning of the season. He was hard to get past, he was hard to beat. He was aggressive in his front foot defending. Um, and, you know, so a lot of the experienced boys did stand up when we needed them to. And then just obviously, it, you know, we're looking over to all the listeners, but it's also yourself again, Popper, two Aussie coaches going out on the big stage. It's a nice narrative as well. Yeah, um, we don't look at it too much. We, you know, I'm sure I'll say hello to Popper before the game and that'll be about it. But, um, you know, it's good to coach against uh, these Aussie coaches that are top coaches. Um, I think, you know, Ange mentioned during the week about, uh, I wouldn't say golden generation, but I would say that he respects what Aussie coaches are doing and he knows what we're able to do. And I was fortunate enough to coach against Ange, coach against Arnie, and, uh, and they were brilliant. And, uh, and I see this season with the tactical side of, you know, the Ufi and with, you know, Popper I know well, but all the other coaches that I hadn't coached against. And it's, you know, the, the difficulties that are thrown at you, are, uh, you know, they're hard. And, and, and that's what you want as a coach. And, and you know, we, we're quick to put down Australian football. But, um, you know, I, I think that we have to really have a look and see tactically how these coaches are improving and the players are improving with it. Oh, just one last one. I mean, Reese Bosnovsky and Nick Milanovic came on pressure cooker scenario, games on the line, you know, Wellington are really pressing and they looked so composed out there and really put in a decent showing. I guess 
You spoke about staying ready. They looked like they were ready, even if Reese only made his debut last week. How did you see their, their showings tonight? Yeah, really good. And and that's what you want. The, uh, Milo was, uh, Milanovic was a bit unlucky that he didn't score. He did well because he, he, he remained calm in that situation, come back in onto his right foot. Uh, I've seen him score a few goals like that in the NPL last season when I was watching his games. So it's it's great. And, uh, and the, the way that we train and we get the players to train, that we expect them to be ready. You know, like Jerry hadn't played much at all this season and, and, you know, it was difficult for him to back up and then back up again like from the last game. But, you know, he showed that uh, because he trains hard and well, he's able to deal with the, the pace of the game. And the same with uh, Bozanowski and uh, Milanovic. So it, w it was good for them and uh, they helped their teammates a lot.